So, uh, well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, uh, we know you are busy, so we really appreciate you taking some time uh, to join us for this um, webinar being presented um, by Dr. Rondo. We're excited to have Brock with us uh, this evening to bring you his uh, webinar um, on early interceptive orthodontics. Uh, my name is Jeff Player. I am a managing partner at um, ProTech Dental Lab in charge of the orthodontic department here. Um, ProTech, uh, I'm sure most of you know, but I'll give you a quick description. Uh, we're um, a full service laboratory located in Vancouver, Canada with customers right across the country. And of course we uh, have um, been specializing in orthodontics in our laboratory for over 40 years. And we have many, um, spent most of that time <laughs> um, working with Dr. Rondeau and are familiar with his treatment modalities and our, um, our team of technicians here are, are very comfortable and, uh, with uh, being able to help and assist in um, most of the things that Brock's gonna be talking about tonight, including things like appliance selection, uh, helping you with your records, uh, even uh, some assistance with treatment planning. Uh, so that's ProTech. And um, uh, Dr. Ron Doe is with us tonight and he has an active practice located in London, Ontario. Um, he's a general practitioner, but his practice specializes in orthodontics, TMJ treatment, and uh, sleep. Um, as mentioned, we at ProTech have a great synergy with Brock and his philosophies behind early interceptive ortho, uh, basically doing phase one orthodontic treatment to make the phase two um, ortho simpler in the end, whether we're treating with braces or aligners, uh, it just makes the job that much easier. Uh, we're doing things like um, uh, intercepting um, uh, problem occlusions like crossbites, developing arches, improving airways in young patients. It all just makes sense. Um, so anyway, we hope that you enjoy this one hour uh, webinar tonight. Uh, and um, if you do, we encourage you to sign up for the next one. Our next one is coming up on March 23rd. Following that, we uh, also hope that you would be excited to join us in person for the full course um, that happens in person beginning April 14th and 15th in Vancouver. We're really excited about that. You know, there really is no substitute for in-person sharing of ideas and concepts and the back and forth that can happen in that in-person setting. And um, uh, the lab will be there to, to assist uh, every step of the way when it comes to that time. Um, so if you're seriously considering adding ortho to your practice, we really think that's the way to go. So for tonight's meeting, uh, you can go ahead and leave your microphones and cameras off. Um, and um, if you do have uh, questions, feel free to use the Q&A feature. It's at the bottom of your screen. You can type in your questions and we will be trying to answer those questions for you either throughout the presentation or later this evening uh, towards the end. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Brock. Thank you, Jeff. Good night, everybody. I'm really happy that you're all here tonight, too, because um, I really think I have a message that can assist you and your patients in your practice. Um, when I look at Jeff, I haven't seen him for a couple of years. I remember one time I had black hair and he had more hair. And the other thing I'm noticing with Jeff, he's supposed to be working hard, but I see he's well tanned. So I'm wondering what he's doing when he's not in the lab, but seriously, he's a very successful guy and he's certainly allowed to go south in the winter time. Anyway, Jeff, it's a pleasure to work with you again. We've been working together for at least 30 years. You're certainly one of the best labs I've ever had to deal with, uh, both from a quality standpoint and a people standpoint. What I really like about your lab is that when the course is over and I've mixed them all up, then they send the case to you and you straighten them out. Seriously though, when you, when you finish a course, you're gonna need some hand-holding. And I think uh, Jeff is really good at that. I mean, they're really, that's their, their, their lab is geared to help you understand what's going on and uh, lead you through. So with any further ado, um, again, they're a great lab. I, I, there's not many labs that know all the appliances I use, but they do. And in fact, Jeff, you and I have developed a couple of appliances together. So design of the Mara and a few other things. So I'm really happy to work with you again and, and um, 
they couldn't pick a better lab than your lab to, to work with. Now this isn't going in. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. We're trying to get we're trying to get trying to get the next slide up there because who wants to look at me the whole time? You know, nobody. Just a moment. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, here okay, we go. Hang on, hang okay. on, hang on. I got to go back and share the screen. Just give me the two seconds. Okay, I got my technical person here. Lady <laughs> that knows everything, and I know nothing about this. Okay. Anyway, so seventy-five percent of children have a malocclusion. Now that's a large number, right? You're you're going to find that there, those patients are in your practice. All these children, you don't have to solicit for them. They're in your practice. They all said, "Now, can I do it with this? Change the beer." Why didn't we check this before? Anyway, they're freezing. So seventy-five percent of children have, your, have a malocclusion. Okay, now if you want to recession-proof your practice, let's face it, we're all in a situation where there's a lot of a lot of um, competition these days. But I find if you start doing orthodontics for children in your practice, you won't have much competition because some orthodontists don't do it, and as you know, in dental school, we're not trained. We're not trained to do it. So. Uh, Anyway, just a moment. we're trying to get these slides to change. I don't know why they're not changing. Anyway, that's you know, that <laughs> no. so as you know, there you go. Dental corporations are okay. coming on. Share the screen. Okay, I think it's almost <laughs> ready to go here, folks. It's moving when I don't share it. <laughs> okay, so we start as early as age four or five. Okay. So the first thing I want to tell you that the most important thing I can tell you probably tonight is that the key to health is to give everybody a proper sized maxilla. Okay. Because if you've got a narrow maxilla, I want you to look at how the high the palate is on that, on that top picture. And that interferes with the airway because when it's up high like that, it closes off the nasal airway. And when the arch is constricted, it closes the nasal airway also. You're going to learn, I think, that airway, airway, airway is the most important thing we have to think about with young children. When we expand the upper arch, we expand the airway. Look at the picture at the bottom and just saw, see how the palate dropped and see how we expanded the, the, the arch. Because the roof of the mouth is the floor of the nose. So again, I can't tell you how important that is because if you've got a narrow arch, you're gonna get crowding on teeth. If you've got a narrow arch, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a posterior crossbite, anterior crossbite. It's going to give you all kinds of malocclusions. It's going to make the class two malocclusion occur. And you sure don't want that. So remember, if you forget everything else I tell you, when you see an arch like that, put an appliance in there and develop it. But you probably should take a course on taking proper records just in case something goes wrong. Although nothing can go wrong, you still should consider taking a course with good records. And my course has that, but I know there's other excellent courses out there too. So my philosophy is called the functional philosophy. I believe in early treatment for children. Okay, so I, I, if you've got crooked teeth, you want to use functional appliances to develop the arches so you can do non-extraction orthodontics. Mothers don't want extractions. Mothers want to find dentists who can treat their younger children without extracting teeth. So you have to make sure everybody in your team tells them all about your philosophy. Now in North America, in some orthodontic practices, they go fixed braces, permanent dentition. And uh, that doesn't make any sense to me when the problem is early, why don't you do it early? And there's the detrimental effects of airway obstruction in children. If you've got large tonsils or adenoids, it affects the growth of the patients. It causes a attention deficit disorder, all kinds of problems. We gotta talk about the airway and everything I do opens the airway. So that's three things that we do to open the airway on patients. Number one, as I mentioned, arch development. We expand the upper arch. Number two, when the mandible is recessive and deficient, we move it forward. That also opens the airway. When you have a deep overbite, we are gonna increase the posterior vertical dimension by erupting the posterior teeth. Now, a lot of orthodontic clinicians don't do that way. A lot of orthodontic clinicians, they will intrude the incisors. And I've seen that frequently with, with uh, the clear aligners and uh, the various companies. They'll put attachments on there and they'll try to intrude the incisors. That's not good for the airway. That's not good for the TMJ. 
So I really think if you're going to do uh, our, you know, any of these treatments, you need to pay attention to the TMJ and you have to think of those three things I told you. If, if you do that, you're going to be in good shape. You're going to have great cases and you're going to have healthier patients. And that's what you want. The problem is orthodontics is moving teeth. You don't want to just move teeth. I don't want my tombstone to say the great tooth mover Rondo. I don't want that. I want them to say he made his children happier and healthier, looking better. And uh, he did it when they were younger. Now look at the profile of this patient. I mean, two things that patient needs. Number one, needs to have the lower jaw brought forward. And number two, it needs to have the vertical dimension increased. Her face height on the left is too short. So you have to erupt the posterior teeth and you have to use a functional appliance like a twin block or a carrier or a mar or something. We teach all those in the course. I'm gonna try and show you a couple of those tonight. Now, I want you to look at the airway on the, on the left photo and see how big it is and see the patient got a slight overjet. Now we've moved the jaw forward and you can see now that we've opened up that airway. Look at the size of the airway. So when you bring the jaw forward, you open the airway and you can see it every time when you take a cephalometric film. There's a patient that we saw before and after. Look at her face. Again, I brought her jaw forward and increased her vertical by erupting her posterior teeth. And I can do that like in seven months with a, with a twin block appliance. I'm gonna show you the twin blocks tonight. And really, what child would not say yes or mother say yes to seven months treatment with an orthopedic appliance like a twin block developed by Dr. Clark, an orthodontist from Fife, Scotland, I've lectured with, rather than wait till the child gets to 17 and do orthodontic surgery and have to have them wear, wear braces for two more years. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know what else I like about what I do? No parent says no. Parents want what's best for their children. And if you present a treatment plan and your staff are on board, because it's a team game, you got to get the staff trained and we do that too. Then the parents say, when do we start? There's no question if you say it's 2,000 or 3,000 or whatever you say, they're going to say, let's go ahead. Whereas with Crown and Bridge or implants, it was a sales pitch for me. There's no sales pitch for ortho. I just explain what they need and they say, yes, when do we start? I love that. And the other thing I love is when was the last time a patient thanked you for filling? I can't remember ever having that happen. But every day I get thanked for making beautiful faces and beautiful smiles and improving self-esteem and healthier jaw joints and healthier airways. I mean, every day my staff and I are rewarded by people saying they appreciate what we do. And I don't know about you, but when I'm getting near the end of my practice, I really do appreciate people that appreciate what I do for them and, and thank me. Okay, so again, we said the ideal appliance, move the jaw forward, open the pharyngeal airway, I showed you that. Now that's how snoring appliances work. You can look at the photo on the above, the patient lying in their back, the tongue's blocking the airway, and you put a functional appliance in or a snoring appliance in and bruise the jaw forward and opens up the airway. So we have to do that. Um, I would encourage you after you learn about orthodontics, you might think about snoring, sleep apnea, and TMD, but let's, let's talk about ortho for now because that's the easiest thing to do. But I believe that early orthodontic treatment will prevent sleep apnea because you bring that jaw forward and hold it there permanently, you won't have to use a snoring appliance because the jaw is already forward. So the twin block moves the jaw forward non-surgically. There's another case that was done with the twin block and you can see her face looks much better. No surgery, seven months treatment. That was done in seven months with an appliance that Jeff makes called a twin block. And I'm gonna show you later what it looks like. There's another patient. And again, she needs to have her vertical increased her posterior teeth must be extruded, not lower anteriors intruded. That's what I mean. If you take a case like that and you just send it off to the companies that do aligners and they don't show the face and they don't know what they're doing, they're going to intrude the incisors and not going to improve her profile. Now, if you're going to do aligners or you're going to do braces, I want you to remember you should treat patients with aligners and braces in class one. What you need to do, in my opinion, and that's why everybody that does aligners should take this course or a course like mine first on functional appliances. The biggest problem with aligners, I find, is you have to slenderize the teeth to make the room for the teeth. 
But if you use an expansion appliance, like we're going to show you tonight that Jeff makes, you can you don't have to do any slenderizing. There's no IPR because you're going to make space for all the teeth. Number two, you're going to bring the jaw forward with functional appliances and fix the class two and mixed dentition. And then the patient, when they come in for braces or aligners, they can have either one, no problem, because they're in class one. Same thing, we can fix class threes in mixed dentition with functional appliances. I'll be showing you some class threes uh, next time, session two. And don't be afraid of class threes. I'll show you very simple appliances to fix some of those easy class threes. Now, the other thing that we found is that I, I started out doing functional appliances. Well, first of all, I took a course from an orthodontist who told me to take out by customers in every patient. Four on the floor. Unbelievable. I did it for three years and then wasn't happy with my results and then took some courses from, from orthodontists and GPs on functional appliances. And I was doing great with ortho. Then I realized that some patients, if I didn't treat them properly and I wasn't sure how to fix the TMJ, didn't know much about it 25 years ago, I had to take course on TMJ. And so I take x-rays of the temporomandibular joint every patient. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is if the patient's jaw is too far back and they got symptoms, see the arrow pointing on the nerves and blood vessels and the disc is in front. When the patient opens, they go onto the disc and cause a click. So if they're clicking, move the jaw forward and you'll stop the clicking and you'll stop the pain. Very simple, very simple. So all my principles with functional appliances, I now apply to the treatment of my patients with temporomandibular joint dysfunction and they get better. First case. Here's Joshua. He's missing a front tooth. He's got traumatic occlusion. So we got to fix him. And um, here's the first thing I need to tell you. Okay. There has to be room for the lateral incisors and the centrals. So this is a trick I picked up. Your cotton roll is 37 millimeters. So you want, you want the cotton roll to go between the molars, as you see on the right. And, and then you'll have a perfectly sized upper arch. The slide on the left, you can see there's not enough room for the teeth. And so the laterals come in and crossbite and you've got crowded teeth. Here's the thing you got to realize. It's not the size of the teeth. It's the size of the arch. So all you have to do is to get most of the teeth to fit is just make the arch wider so there's room for the teeth to fit. So that's why I can't believe that every orthodontic clinician doesn't start with functional appliances to make room for all the teeth. And again, Invisalign, and these, I know Invisalign is actually working on an appliance to expand the arch. They're, they're starting to try everything, Jeff, that you and I have been doing for, for 25 years. Anyway, so that's a little simple appliance it's called a Schwartz appliance. And, and it's got two class on each side and a midline screw. You adjust it twice a week. You take it out and then you get the color chart from, uh, from Jeff and the patient can pick different colors. When they pick colors, then they're really gonna love their appliance. They, they wear it all the time, they take it up to clean it, they take it out for sports, they adjust the screws twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday, and each turns a quarter of a millimeter. And that's the uh, key, and that's the appliance. And we show you how to do that in the course, it's very easy. I think you also have videos, Jeff, on, on, um, on how to adjust appliances and all kinds of information you've got on your website. So you really need to, they're a fantastic, a resource for you. And you sure don't want to send to another lab that's $5 less because they don't have the expertise that ProTech has in, in helping you make the right diagnosis and the right design for the appliance. Because sometimes we put Adams class, sometimes with ball class, sometimes we put different, different C class, all kinds of class, and they will help you with that. Okay. So there's the appliance going in. We did the top and the bottom because the lower arch is also crowded. See, there's not enough room in the lower arch for four incisors. There's, see, the, the two centrals are, are crossed over and the laterals are really small. So we have to expand the upper and lower to make room for the laterals. So if you forget everything I tell you about arches, please remember if you have no room for the lateral incisors, there's always room for the centrals. There's no room for the laterals. You need to expand. How much? Till there's room for the laterals. When they come in, you're in good shape. Usually if there's room for the centrals and laterals, all the rest of the teeth come in nicely. Okay, now remember, you got a constricted arch 
And, and what happens if you have an incorrect swallow, you don't expand the upper arch. So the patient cannot be a mouth breather. Mouth breathers, the tongue does not go in the palate and expand the upper arch. So you want nasal breathers and you create nasal breathers. Remember I told you by developing, expanding the upper arch. So the intermolar width on him was 26 millimeters. Normal is 36 to 39. Remember the cotton roll is 37. If you had a broad face, a brachycephalic face, you might go 39. If you got a narrow face, maybe go 37. So it's, it's uh, just as a guide. So the applied is open seven millimeters. Okay, so now there's gonna be room for the laterals. That's all you have to do. These, these are painless appliances. This guy's six or seven years old, he'll wear it because he doesn't wanna have extractions of his teeth. So there he went from 26 to 33 and look at all the teeth lined up beautifully in the upper. No braces, just all we did was put that appliance in. No braces, okay? And, and the mother's very happy. And, and remember, he can breathe better now. He can probably breathe through his nose instead of his mouth. And he's gonna have a nicer smile. And we did the same thing in the lower. So the lower sports appliance, we expand the lower. And look, now there's room on the right-hand side for the four incisors. Whereas before there was only room for, well, terrible crowding in the lower arch. So these appliances were great. Now we also have fixed appliances. If the mother thinks, that the child is not gonna be a good cooperator. So I'll show you a fixed appliance next. But uh, again, room for the laterals. I mean, easy, 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 expanded both, open the screw, uh, uh, seven millimeters, which you usually get two millimeters a month with expansion. So maybe that was four months treatment and he looks fantastic. So now we just have to make room for that lateral incisor to come in, it comes in and he's looking pretty good. I charged him. He never came back for treatment because the rest of his treatment must have come in straight. So the mother paid me $2,500 for upper and lower sports appliances and records $500. And how much time do you think I spent with the patient? I mean, it's embarrassing because it's it's run by my, my team. They're all very capable of looking at an appliance, see if it's fitting, any sore spots, call me in to adjust them, uh, make sure the oral hygiene's okay. He's turning the screw regularly. I mean, it's very little chair time on behalf of, the de behalf of the dentist. And I know that when I was doing fillings, I had to bend over the patient, it was hard on me physically. This is really easy. They call me Dr. Delegator. I'm proud of that name. I walk around and delegate. And we got seven operatories and we're busy and we got a great practice. And we are having fun making patients healthy. Okay, so again, there's room for the laterals now. Looks great. He never came back for further treatment. He had a bit of a deep overbite, but he didn't come back. And maybe that was fixed when the posterior teeth erupted. And there he is. He's got uh, hopefully four teeth coming in instead of just two. Now I've written a book. I wrote a book on early orthodontic treatment for children. And I got 19 cases in there from start to finish colored pictures of different cases. So it's certainly, that's certainly something you could, you could get a hold of. But again, I think the ideal situation would be to take the course online or live. And I think most patients like the live course because they got the chance to ask questions. So there I am showing a patient a book. I mean, she might be in the book. Okay, why do you think general dentists should start offering uh, courses? Well, the main thing I think that you have to think about is my motto is, my mission statement is the pathway to health starts here. So right above my receptionist's head, the pathway to health starts here at our practice. You need to start looking at improving the health of your patients. And you can't do that by intruding incisors. And you can't do that by not, by extracting teeth. You can't do that. You've got to use functional appliances. If you do that, you will improve the overall health of your patients. And why else did you go into dentistry? Did you go into dentistry to repair teeth? Yes, you did. Repair, take out bad teeth? Yes, you did. Root canals? Yes, you did. But you know what? What about this little girl? I'm going to show you in a minute. She comes in eight-year-old with headaches. What are you going to do for her? First of all, how are you even going to know she's got a headache? Not many eight-year-old girls or mothers will ask a dentist about headaches because they think we fix teeth. But guess what? We can fix her. And look at the difference. Look at the difference. I mean, that's why you want to go to the office every day. When you see the picture on the left, she's very sad. She's going home from school with headaches. And look at the picture on the right. 
all I did was expand her upper arch for about four months and with a, with a Schwartz appliance and then use a twin block, which I'm going to show you later, to move her jaw forward. And I've just changed her whole personality. No more staying at home with, with headaches. And this is probably my greatest case ever, I think. That little girl on the left had buck teeth and going nowhere. And I show you her in the course, in my course. And on the right, she's now a model. And again, same thing, expand the upper arch, move the lower jaw forward with a functional appliance, a fixed one, and, and she's drop dead gorgeous. And you just feel fantastic when you change the whole personality of a patient. Patient on the left, low self-esteem. Patient on the right, grinning from ear to ear, she's a model. So you're gonna, this is something which you wanna think about. You wanna increase your satisfaction of, of going to the office every day. I mean, here I am still going to the office every day. People are gonna say, don't you think you should retire? I said, retire from what? I'm, all work, I'm now working two weeks and taking two weeks off. I think that's plenty. Anyway, of course you can add new income to your, to your, to your practice because if the, if the dentists in your area are not doing this, if the orthodontist area are not doing this, you're going to get known as the one that's doing it. You're going to get a lot of referrals because mothers want to find dentists who can treat their children early and not tell them something stupid, like come back when you're 13, all your permanent teeth are up. What other medical dental procedure is ever fixed after age 13, except some people do orthodontics after 13. So it's ridiculous. Anyway. I think I've had many dentists come up to me over the last 35 years and say, you changed my way of looking at dentistry. You've revitalized my interest in dentistry. I just love going to the office now and helping these children. Okay, and of course, a friend of mine wrote this, do not focus on the economy, focus on your economy. In other words, that's what you're doing tonight. You're focusing on your economy. You're trying to figure ways that you can increase your practice and also enjoy more what you do. And I think Early orthodontic treatment of children is the way to go. I love this one too. My consultant gave me this one. Successful people do and unsuccessful people don't feel like doing. So I tell everybody to take my course. That course manuals, there's four of them, it's 250 pages each. If you want to be successful, you read those manuals. Even if you don't feel like reading them, you read them. And you'll be more successful than if you just have the manuals and look at the cover. Okay, well, I, we also give a certificate from the International Association for Orthodontics. I was over in Poland lecturing and they got their certificates and they're all pretty happy. That was the most happy guy I've ever seen getting a certificate. I think she, I mean, I think he won the lottery or something. Anyway, the thing is we, we give credentials. Uh, if you take the course, you get 132 hours of CE credits, which will last you several years with your dental boards. And um, you get a certificate because you have to earn it though. So I, there's, a, there's about 12 lab exercises. You have to pass a test every session. It's a true false. So we got a 50% chance of being right. Anyway, we, we, uh, it's a hands-on course. That's the most beautiful golf hole I've seen in a long time. And of course I did hit the green once with a ball. Many other times it went down the ocean or down the, in, the, in the woods, but who cares? When you're in a beautiful place like that, who cares about a golf ball? Now, here's what patients want. They want broad smiles. Everyone wants to look like, like Julie Roberts. So in my office, I have these photos. You might try to find photos like this in magazines and cut them out and show patients. Obviously, Kate has got a beautiful smile and William's not as nice. I'm not sure if William had bicuspids extracted. His mother did, Lady Di, but I'm not sure if he did. And I don't feel like calling the royal family and asking them, but I just like her smile better. And so I think what you want to look for, if you see black corners of the side of the, of the smile, I think he would look better expanded. So if I see a patient like that and I get them at any age, I tell them, let's try and develop that arch. So here's a patient who's about 15 and she's got a very constricted upper arch. Look at how the upper teeth are tipped in and look how the lower molars are tipped in. And um, then we broaden her arch, 10 millimeters each. I put an appliance on the upper and appliance on the bottom, expand her 10 millimeters, both sides. And look at the smile. I mean, when she, when I did that to her, some guy proposed to her. I really think I should have been invited to the wedding because I think I helped her with her smile 
and her personality and helped her attract a nice guy. But what a difference. I mean, that's just, if you look at her eyes, look at the eyes on the left, they're, they're sort of looking at you, but the eyes on the right are just so happy. Look at her. I mean, she's just, she's beaming. She's just saying, oh my God, I can't believe how good I look. And that's all using two appliances and braces by uh, by ProTech. Narrow smile, broad smile. So in my course, I think whatever course you take, you want to do simple cases. Start with a mixed dentition because the mothers want that treatment and the kid children need it. Functional appliances, non-extraction span arches. Now, I'm not trying to make you to be an orthodontist in eight days. We still need orthodontists to do the difficult cases, but I would like to concentrate on doing the simple cases. And also, if your orthodontist in your area is not doing early treatment for children, then you should be doing it. I think that's one of the reasons I started it 35 years ago, because the, the, the orthodontists in my area were not doing it then. Now, some are doing it now, and but then they weren't. So I was feeling a real need. So you have to find out in your area what's happening. That's what happens when you take out by cuspid sometimes. So that patient lost his bicuspids and he's got a concave profile. This patient had her lower jaw move forward because straight profile. I showed you here before. Well, let's show you Danielle. Now, this guy is seven years old and I let the mother make the decision. His lips are part, he's a mouth breather and he has no room for the laterals. You can see the lower laterals coming in sideways and, the, and there's no room for the upper laterals. And so you ask the mother, is your child a good cooperator or not? In this case, the mother says, no, I think he'd lose the appliance. Let's go fixed. So we show him fixed appliance and we do the fixed. So you can see from the photo on the left that that small lateral incisor primary, there's just not enough room and look at the crowding on the lower. So it couldn't be easier, either putting a fixed one in or removable. What do you want to do? Look at that lateral sideways. You got to make some room or you're not going to be able to straighten it. Now imagine if that case went, if all the permanent teeth erupted and you still had those crooked teeth in the lower, you'd be slenderizing, right? But no, you don't have to slenderize. If you're doing aligners or slenderize doing fixed, you can just put appliances in and fix that, make the room for those teeth. It seems so logical to me, I guess because I've been doing it for so long. So functionally speaking, now here's how we diagnose cases, okay? We look at the functional problems, He's a mouth breather and forward head posture. Skeletal problems, he's class one. Dentally, a constricted arch, but class one with anterior crowding. Okay. And there's the appliance. It's called a maxillary transverse transforce. Okay. So transverse means lateral expansion. And um, it's a fixed appliance. He's only what, six or seven? I guess he was seven. And he's got bands on his molars. On his, on his primary molars. His second primary molars, there's a band. On the first primary molar, there's a mesial rest, which is which got flowable composite. And then it's the smallest fort module they can put in there. And he's got that in there and it's very comfortable for him. I mean, it's just one little bar going across. And the lower one is a slightly different appliance. It's got another coil spring, which is a little more powerful than the upper one. And, and what you do is you put these appliances in, there's no adjusting. You don't have to do anything. You just bring the patient every two months and see they get about a millimeter a month expansion. And so you, there's no chair time. Bring it every two months. There's no pain involved. There's no discomfort. They're very comfortable. They can talk. They can speak. And, and they work 100% because they can't take them out. It's, it's, uh, there's four teeth holding them in. And those coil springs are self-activating coil springs. So the upper center expanders in, the lower expanders in. No room for the laterals. Look at the one on the right, room for the laterals. You know, I mean, no braces. Just expand the arch and let those teeth come in. Give the room for the teeth, then they come. I mean, it's 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 fantastic. Plus, you know, you're making room now for all the permanent teeth. So you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting early on. I mean, rather than extract teeth or rather than have crowding or doing slenderizing, I mean, develop the upper arch and develop the lower arch if you need to. So there you can see how much that coil springs open. So that coil springs open. 
quite a bit and painlessly. And you can see the photo on the left, crowding, photo on the right, all of the teeth are in. And that first molar is now erupting. So really, really great. And no chair time. My my I do the initial, I do a part, my staff does the initial consultation. And then I come in and they explain to me what they see, and I agree with them or disagree. And then I talk to the mother. And uh, sometimes the mother will be shown different appliances by my team members, a fixed one, removable, educate them. And uh, they want to start. They, they absolutely think that that's the way to go. And it makes sense to them to treat early, to avoid more expensive things later on. And they say yes to the treatment. And we bring them in for records. Now I do the cons final consultation. I do the final consultation, explain to the mother what we're gonna do, sign an informed consent agreement. My office manager comes in and does inform the uh, treatment agreement, financial agreement, and then we start. we start. So look at that. I mean, that's a great case. And all we did was use two appliances that were fixed with nickel titanium coil springs, which are self-activating. I mean, how easy is that? And how much appreciated that is? I don't think he ever came back for treatment either. Um, and we always give them a little discount when they come back, when they've had phase one done. So I don't know if he came back for phase two or not. I can't remember, but I just know it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, his arch is much nicer now than it was before. And again, we charge 2,500 and 500 for records today. I think we charge maybe 3,000 plus records of 500. So you, I, I would urge you though, not to do these cases without some sort of records, some orthodontic records. And so whatever case you take, course you take, make sure they teach proper records so that you can make a proper diagnosis. Well, I've just told you, make room for the laterals. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's very important. So you can see, on the left-hand side, that little that little uh, opening is four millimeters. And then in the right photo, it's nine millimeters. So that arch expanded five millimeters. And, and if it's not enough, they can put in a bigger size and expand more. But uh, there he is with straight teeth. Well, I guess yeah, we're just waiting for his teeth to come in. All his permanent teeth are coming in now. So that's all he needed. I don't think he ever had braces. So that mother saved a lot of money, didn't she? She's not gonna pay 7,500 for braces. She paid 2,500, and they're pretty happy. Okay, so we do have a course, as Jeff mentioned. It's a four session course, eight days, starting uh, in Vancouver. Session one, April 14th and 15th, and two, June 9th and 10th, and then you get the summer off, and you come back in September and October and finish. Now the course fee is 1095, it's going up to 1295, but because you're starting early, you get in for 1095. And you get a discount if you pay in advance. So you can talk to Lee at Rondo Seminars if you want. Lee, write that down, Lee at rondoseminars.com. And um, she'd be glad to tell you all about the courses and send you a brochure. Okay, now of course there's a comprehensive manual with each, with each course. You're allowed to bring two staff members to session one at no charge. When we talk about, I'll be showing some of these cases session one to get the staff involved so they understand about functional appliances and why they should use them. And um, so, and, and the course is also available online, but it, it's a team game. And you know, in your office, it's a team game. You have dental assistants that are fantastic, hygienists are fantastic, all on the same page, doing great dentistry. So for ortho, you have to have your team involved. You must have courses with your team. And we have a four-day course to train your staff how to talk to patients and motivate patients and treat patients. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty comprehensive program. Okay. So I mentioned that before about the airway. Now here's this, if you watch this, uh, this was the same patient I treated that had that beautiful smile and beautiful eyes. So she came in like this. So you can see quite a bit of crowding in that cuspid. That's about a 10 millimeter cuspid in a two millimeter space. But remember, you can see the posterior teeth are torqued lingually. They're tipped in. So get in there and develop the arch. 
so that we used a, a coil expander, fixed coil expander, like I showed you before in the last case. And that expanded about six millimeters. And then we put the braces on and we found that she was still a bit of crossbite. So I put a Schwartz appliance in with the braces and, um, and did everything at once, straightened the teeth and upright the teeth and made room for the, and fixed the crossbite. So there's the broad arch. Those teeth are not tipped out of the bone. They're just uprighted over the bone. Okay, and you put a lingual bond and retainer in there with a, um, with, with a lingual bond and retainer. Jeff makes that for you and, you and you put that in. But look at the difference between the narrow arch on the left and the broad arch on the right. Look at the tongue back closing off the airway. And I think it may be causing sleep apnea and snoring later on in life because of the narrow arch. And now the tongue's forward opening the airway. So you're, you're just, you can't miss when you develop arches. You just cannot make the patient, you've got to make them better. And there you can see the tongue back when it's a constricted arch and the tongue forward when it's expanded arch. Of course, it improved the pace of speech also, right? Sometimes there's no room for your tongue. You can't speak properly. Okay. So I do have this happening in my office and we're opening a mini residency in orthodontics in, in Vancouver. So the, the, the course is finished now or, or it's full, but maybe when you take the course after the course, you may want to consider this. This is a hands-on course in Ron Godot's office. And um, it's going to start, I think, in uh, I think in April. So anyway, but that, I just want to show you that we do have this available where you can take a hands-on course if you want. But I certainly recommend you take the, the four-session course first. So we go over cases on, uh, he's going to do it on uh, Friday night. And that's my, uh, that's my uh, private office, which... It's like a boardroom, and that's where I give my lectures. So he would probably do it in his reception room. And the dentist work on patients, and then my hygienist and people work here watching their dentist. Does my internet connection is not stable? That matter? Nope. No, no, doesn't matter. No, okay, okay. This guy looks happy, and so again, they're they're working under supervision. It's a hands-on course, putting brackets on, putting wires in, appliance adjustments, everything. And we're there to help them, guide them all the way. And that's a good friend of mine that he took my course and then decided he was just as smart as I am. And he is. And so he set up his own course in his office in Toronto. So he's got a mini residency in Toronto. And I'm giving him a copy of my book. Anyway, you need to take a course that gives comprehensive records so you can make the right diagnosis. Okay, here's the girl I showed you. Okay, there she is. Now, again, ask yourself, what would you do if that little girl came into your office and the mother said she's having headaches and migraine headaches and staying home from school? What would you do? Do you know someone who would take an eight-year-old girl and treat her? Well, hopefully you'll learn how to treat her. If not, you have to find somebody that can treat her. So maybe, I don't know, talk to Jeff. Talk to Jeff and he'll give you the names of dentists that have taken my courses and you can refer her to, to a dentist if you don't want to do this. But I'm hoping I can motivate you tonight to make you want to learn about this and see if you can help the children in your practice. It's got a retronatic profile. You know you've got to bring the jaw forward. You can see from the profile. Got an overjet of six and overbite of five. You got to fix those two things. Class two molar relationship. Daily headaches. You brought her home from school due to headaches. So she's got a, she has enough room in her mouth for her incisors. But when you bring the jaw forward end to end, she's in buccal crossbite. You got that? When you bring the lower jaw forward, with a six millimeter overjet, you're in buccal crossbite in the posterior. So that means you have to expand the upper edge first and then bring the jaw forward. Now you can do it all with one appliance. There's the twin block. I know that the first time I saw that, I said, who's gonna wear that? Well, I can tell you they wear it because if they don't wear it, they're going for surgery at 17. So they're certainly gonna wear it. 
and it's just five millimeter blocks interlock at 70 degrees. You wear it for seven months and you're fixed. It's unbelievable. I just have to wear it for seven months. So there it is, a midline screw, which you, you want an alligator on there or something, or turtle, I don't know what that is. Anyway, glows in the dark. And there's the lower one. Now you see that the lower molars can extrude. Remember you had a deep overbite, and remember I like to fix deep overbites by extruding the lower molars. So the lower molars will come up on their own, and we have to, we'd have to grind the upper block to let them come up. And that's what the patient looks like. The patient looks like this after maybe three months. So that's why they probably have to wear their twin blocks to eat. But then what we do after this, then we do the composite buildups on the primary molars to give her an occlusion and put in an appliance called a Riconator, which I'm gonna show you soon. There's the twin block and I'm grinding down the plastic at the back so the teeth can erupt. And there's your profile, which looks fantastic. But what's really neat, she looks better. And I'll be honest, how I get into functional appliances, I like the appearance of the patient. I did it because I like the profile. I didn't know about TMJ 35 years ago. I don't think many people did. I mean, it's even tough today because it's not taught in the dental school. TMJ is not taught in medical schools or dental schools. And yet 35% of the population has a problem, plus children. 35% of adults have the problem. So again, functional appliance, non-extraction, bring the jaw forward, give you a full upper lip, wide arches, broad smiles, healthy TMJ. There's no downside for using this appliance. Okay. So again, we showed you that before. And remember, that diagram shows how you bring the jaw forward away from the nerves and blood vessels. Look at the, look at the, the, the photo on the right, and that, or photo on the left. You see how the condyles is compressing the nerves and blood vessels and, of course, causing all kinds of ear symptoms, along with headaches. So there's the patient at the end. So we did braces on the end afterwards to get the teeth to touch. And we play video games in her office. And, um, okay, so we got, I'm going to show you this case. I got two more cases. Okay, so let's show you her. So she's got an open bite, okay? So her tongue is going between her teeth, so she can't, those teeth will not erupt. See the tongue, it, it's on the picture in the left and the picture on the right, you can see the tongue right there. Every time she swallows, the tongue goes between her teeth. And her problem is what's causing that problem? What's causing the tongue to come forward? Well, it's got large tonsils. We got large tonsils, the tongue comes forward to open up the airway so she can breathe. And there's all kinds of articles to prove that. So you have to refer the patient to an ear, nose, and throat specialist to remove the tonsils before you do any more treatment. You can expand her, but you can't put a crib on the appliance unless the tonsils are removed first. Okay, so step number one is always remove the tonsils first. I teach you in session three how to deal with ENT specialists and how to write letters to them and how to, how to get them to go along with removing the tonsils because a lot of them don't want to do it, they don't get paid enough, and they wonder why a dentist knows about tonsils when we're supposed to be fixing teeth. We tell them we're responsible for the child's malocclusion and also the bite and also her breathing. And, she, and anyway, there's all kinds of reasons why to take out the tonsils. So then I put a client in, which is guaranteed to work. It's called a Hyrex with a crib, okay? So there it is, and they wear that appliance, and I know it looks like a very <laughs> difficult appliance to wear, but it's a real big problem. If you don't fix it, she'll have the same malocclusion when she's uh, 18. So if you put that crib on, the teeth will erupt, and you can see the tongue cannot go between the teeth. The crib holds it there, and they do fine. Even one granddaughter wore one of these, and, and she wasn't terribly impressed, but it worked. And now she's got a beautiful smile. Any patient's got a thumb sucking habit or a tongue thrusting habit, you need to stop it. That's stage one. So she had a three millimeter anterior open bite because the tongue's going between the teeth every time she swallows. And on the right hand side, she's got a slight overbite. So really, really nice case. Now that's, we open it, they got a Hyrex screw in the bottom or the, or the top and you turn that and you, you do it twice a week and you're open four millimeters. So that took two months to do that. 
And then after five months, you can take off the crib because by then the tongue is trained. So the crib comes off, but that appliance has to stay in for six months after the last turn, or you'll get a relapse. So again, when you expand, you have to hold for six months afterwards to make sure you don't get a relapse. So there we are. Broad maxillary arch, hopefully room for all the teeth. Leave the Hyrex appliance in, the fixed appliance in for six months as a retainer. She's got a broad arch. It looks so much better. I mean, remember, if you don't fix it now and you had to put a crib in a teenager, it's not going to go over well. But a little eight-year-old will wear anything. And they're smart little girls. When you tell them, would you like to have your teeth fixed? Would you like straight teeth? Yes. I say, just wear this for six months or so. And then you'll have straight teeth. And there's no braces. We didn't put a brace on her. It's amazing. And I charged her to 2000 and the records are 500 And the mother was very happy to pay that. OK. Sometimes they'll just double and they kind of laugh and they say, I'm glad you didn't. But there's a smile afterwards. Again, some of these kids, when they have this kind of a smile, they won't smile because they're ashamed of their smile. And then their, their other friends think they're not friendly because they don't smile. So, and on the right, she's just learning how to smile because it just happened. So I have to tell her, you sit in front of a mirror and practice smiling. So, okay. So here, this is important. The contraindication of the tongue thrust appliance. You must surgically remove the tonsils first before you use the crib. Otherwise, the patient will choke. And don't ask me how I know. I did it once. And it was a mistake. But I went to dental school, didn't learn about tonsils. But they're back there. And all you have to do is push the tongue down and have a look. Okay, last case. Here we go. Again, how to diagnose headaches. Here comes a little girl in your practice. Again, she's eight years old and she's got headaches. So I would urge you now, even if you just want to send to us, you send to Lee at roundofseminars.com. We'll send you this TMJ health questionnaire form which I think every dentist should fill out prior to any patient coming to his office. You have to know if they've got headaches before you treat them. And then if you treat them and they still have headaches, they can't blame you. But if, if, you, if, you, if you don't have a, re a record of previous headaches and they say you caused them, that's not good. So she's got headaches, the front of her head, ring in the ears, deep overbite, okay? So very simple treatment for her. Very simple. We got to open the bite. I remember erupting the back teeth or another one I'm going to do is I'm going to add composite buildups. I'm trying to move her condyle down and forward. When you increase the vertical, you move the condyle down and forward. When you expand the upper arch, you move the condyle down and forward. When you use a twin block, you bring the jaw forward. You move the condyle down and forward. You've got to move the condyle down and forward. Many of us were taught up and back. It's not up and back. The nerves are back there. Not a good place to put them. Okay. In the course, I teach you cephalometrics and good records. And um, it's, uh, it's very enjoyable because after you take the course, you send it to Jeff and he does it for you. Jeff, they, they do all your steps for you and print them up and make them look really pretty and you show them to the patients, and then you have full records. You really shouldn't do orthodontics without taking full records. My treatment chart, my diagnostic treatment chart is 12 pages long. I can tell you, when you finish 12 pages, you know everything is wrong with that patient, and you can't possibly make the wrong diagnosis. Remember, I do functional skeletal dental. So she's got, she's got a deep overbite. So we're going to put an auriculator, which is an appliance. I'll show you. Take the bite. You can talk to Jeff about getting some of these bite sticks. And um, he can give you those, I'm sure. And then you can take the bites. So there's the auriculator. It's cemented onto the molar bands at the back. You've got mesial rests on the primary molars at the front. And you've got that anterior bite plate to prevent the patient from biting on the roof of the mouth. OK? But here's the key. If you just put that reconator in and open the bite and have the lower teeth hit the ramp, you're gonna have an open bite at the back and they can't eat. 
So you must build up the primary molars, first and second primary molars with composite, and now the patient can eat, and that back molar will come up on its own. Okay, so the reconator moves the jaw down and forward away from the nerves and blood vessels. The buildups to open the bite do the same thing. And you're improving the health of the temperamental joint and her headaches are gone. Her mother can't believe it. Had headaches, gone to a regular dentist. He didn't know what to do. How can you know what to do when they don't teach about TMJ in dental school? I tell the mother, it's not his fault. He's a smart guy, he's done great dentistry. Just let me fix the bite and let me fix the jaw and then go back to him for the rest of your life. I'll just be involved in a couple of years. And again, move the condyle down and forward. So look at the size of that space at the back between the molars. And there's a ramp that you don't see there in the front. There's a ramp, there's a bite plate, but a ramp keeping the jaw from going back. So you need that ramp and Jeff makes great reconators and um, just send him a bite registration. Usually Jeff, as you know, I want a one millimeter rubber jet, one millimeter rubber bite. Maybe I should have sent to you. I would have got one millimeter rubber jet, one millimeter rubber bite. This is kind of end to end. I'd like that a little better. Okay. So there's the reconator. It allows the page to chew and supports the TMJ, eliminates the headaches. So don't put the reconator in without the buildups and don't do the buildups without the reconator. You need both. You don't want the jaw to fall back. So the reconator prevents from falling back and prevents the lower incisor from hitting the roof of the mouth and you're in good shape. Then you put a bracket on the, on the lower molar and put an elastic on and that tooth comes up very quickly. And the reconator, remember the lower incisor bite in front of that ramp. Now the first molars come up, look at the slide on the right, how that first molars come up. Remember they had about a four to five millimeter space there before. So what you're doing, you're establishing a new occlusal plane for this patient. You're fixing the overjet, you're fixing the overbite. You're fixing the molar relationship. It's phenomenal and you're getting rid of headaches and they're paying you for this and they're thanking you for this. And it's a wonderful feeling when you can take an eight-year-old girl and get rid of her headaches and wonder how many other people in your area could do it. Hopefully more and more. We started with a big five millimeter space between the molars and now it's closed. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Remember we put the elastic, put a bracket on the lower molar and just put an elastic on there. Okay, so phase one was 2,500 for the record and the four buildups and the records are 500. Again, I can't tell you how happy I am to be able to eliminate her headaches in such an easy way, one record and four buildups. So that's pretty well it, I think. Yeah, we got rid of her headaches, deep overbite headaches. So we'll rate this down. Lower jaw back too far, you can get headaches. Bring the jaw forward with the twin block. Deep overbite, headaches, erupt the lower posterior teeth, put in a reconator, hold the jaw forward. That's it, that's it. That's it. I treat TMJ pays the same way. I the same principles that I use for functional appliances, I apply the TMJ because I got to move the condyle down and forward. That's it. So there's a nice uh, little reconator and an article there. So again, take comprehensive records, make the correct diagnosis. And I think I have, it's exactly 9.30, exactly. I can't believe it. Of course, I pr practiced this presentation many times so I get in exactly at 9.30. I've done my best, and um, I'm. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, my advice to you is: you get a copy of this, and you have a lunch and learn, and you sit down if you want to do this, and show your team this video, and book an hour and a half. So you pay for their lunch, but not their hourly wage, because they're going to get CE credits. We'll give them a one hour CE credits to run the seminars, which they can help them get their license, okay? Do an hour and a half. So show the video for an hour. Remember, it's exactly an hour. And then ask them what they think. Ask them if they think that's something they would like to add to your office because you need their support. 
And my advice to you is if somebody sits there and says, no, I don't want to do it. I haven't got time, blah, blah, blah. You might want to consider changing her to someone who supports you. Because you want everybody on the same page, but you have to motivate them. So if you turn to them and say, look, I would like to do this for my patients. I think this is necessary. And a lot of the staff, if they have young children, will say, hey, this is good because, I mean, this is going to help my kids. You know, my own children, this will help. And you're going to help the children in your practice. So that's my advice. Have a lunch and learn. Show the video and get the reaction and just see what they think. I'm hoping that I've been able to motivate you and motivate them. Okay. So my buddy Jeff with the great suntan and all this knowledge over these years. You're the smartest guy I ever met. I think, Jeff, you know, you know so much about the appliances. You know so much. You're so helpful. And the main thing I like about you is that you will help the, pay, the dentist all day long with their case. And you have two mics with you too, right? There's a mic and a mic. And they also help with diagnosing cases. And that's so important that they send the first 20 cases to you guys and get your opinion on, on what you think the diagnosis should be and how the appliance should be designed. Where do you put the screw? Where do you put the class? Use fixed or removable, the whole deal. But anyway, thank you very much for, for letting me work with you for the last at least 25 years, as I've enjoyed every moment. I'm really looking forward to teaching that course in April. So uh, again, thank you for, for getting promoting this, this, this webinar with for 50 dentists. It shows that your dentists are very progressive. That's good. Well, it's, one you, largest, it's one of the largest, it's one of the largest yachts I've had in a long time. So I'm very impressed. Thank you again. Yeah, we're we're really happy about it. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, a couple of questions came in through the evening. They're all just paraphrase them so we can kind of um, um, you know cover them quickly. But uh, I thought I'd ask you. Um, and you talked quite a bit about uh, arch development in younger patients. What are your feelings about expansion in, um, in older patients? And, and how old is too old to expand? So I get that question a lot. And you could probably answer it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it. So a lot of authorities think that the midline suture, the palatal suture, will, will uh, close off in females after they through grow about between 14 and 15, and in males, when most of the growth spurt has happened between 16 and 17. But I have found that to be open in about 98% of cases. Very rarely is that ever locked. And I know you've been making functional appliances for teenagers and adults for 40 years, you tell me. So right. you know it works. Yeah. And if it didn't work, I'll tell you when it doesn't work, when if you're turning the screws and it hurts and the teeth tip out, they tip out like this, then it's then it's locked, but it's just so rare, and I just I just think just do it and and um, your whole life, the cerebral spinal fluid goes goes through the sutures of your head and you, and that's another suture goes through and you have to have that. So the answer is, you can basically do it any time. Sometimes in in older adults we got to go slower with the turning, okay. but yeah. I just I think it's a fantastic appliance for helping everybody. And, and that is what we see in the laboratory as well. And, and um, I think your point about um, tipping teeth is valid uh, in uh, older patients. There might be a tendency to tip more than expand um, and split a suture, but um, sometimes that's all that's needed anyway. And it's, it is advantageous to tip teeth that are um, in a constricted palate that are already tipped lingually. So there's nothing wrong right. with that. We see that quite often in our liner cases as well. Right. So, yeah, and the other question that I that I saw come across our table here was um, to do with um, airway. Because can you expand a little bit on the benefits to um, expansion as it relates to the airway? Okay, so the roof of the mouth is the floor of the nose. Okay, so when you expand the upper arch, you're opening up the nasal airway, and many times we're converting mouth breathers to nasal breathers. And I wish I had more time to, to enlarge on the problem with mouth breathing and the advantage of nasal breathing. You get 20% more oxygen if you breathe your nose than your mouth, and oxygen is the key to, key to life. And the other thing, remember, I showed you that the palate will drop. 
So when you expand the arch, the palate drops and that opens the nasal airway vertically. And when you expand, it opens it horizontally. And I, the most important thing to do is get that upper arch wide enough. So all that get rid of the crowding and then allow the lower jaw to come forward. Because if the upper jaw is narrow, you can't bring the lower jaw forward. And you certainly don't want to extract teeth. I mean, that's what you've been teaching for years that use these appliances, prevent surgery, prevent extractions, minimize the expense because, you know, orthodontics is 7,500 to 10,000 these days in some cities. And you can do the case for 2,500 and, and avoid all that expense and, and avoid the surgery and extractions. The mothers are ecstatic. Right, right. Yeah, and that, that, that also relates to what we're seeing in the laboratory. Um, many more cases now that are, you know, the vast majority of the cases we see in the lab are treated non-extraction. So, uh, which relates to developing arches and making more room for the teeth. So, so that's great. I want to ask you a question. Are you getting more and more orthodontist clients? Yeah, we have a lot of orthodontist yeah. clients. Good, and a lot that's of wonderful. Clients. Yeah. That's wonderful because I think when I started with you 25 years ago, there were more GPs doing it and less orthodontists, but gradually, hopefully, the orthodontists are doing it too because we gotta we gotta treat our children better. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 That, yeah for sure. And uh, you know, I think just building up the um, orthodontic uh, know-how um, across the industry is advantageous for everybody, and we've always felt that, and that's why we've had a strong um, uh, general practitioner. Uh, component to our orthodontic department at ProTech for, for years now. So, Rock, I want to thank you for your time well, tonight. One other, you know, one other quick thing I want to say. Yeah, we, go ahead. Have, we have a number of study clubs going uh, that you attend and you, you run the study right. club with Mike, Mike Lowry. So after the course is over, there are study clubs to help them. And yeah. because they're going to need some handholding and some advice when they, and we got study clubs they can attend in Vancouver. I'm going to set up a virtual study club where they don't have to go travel. They can just sit in their own house and, and we'll show them how to set up the cases. So we're going to do virtual study clubs. you got live study clubs in, in mm -hmm. Vancouver. we got a mini residency happening in Vancouver. There's lots of things happening to help them after the course is over because we don't want to leave them. Plus, we have advanced course they can take too. But, but mainly, you're there to help them get started and, and uh, encourage them. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. It's a great point. And it's a big part of what we offer is that assistance. And, you know, we can call it handholding if we wish, but it's, it's working in partnership with our clients to, to the benefit of the patient. Uh, we can, you know, obviously we have a lot of experience and so we can tell people what others are doing and what we know works versus what, what um, uh, doesn't or what we're, um, uh, what we know to be state of the art. And we can talk about all those things with our, with our, Clients, so them. one other quick thing, you'll also tell them what case to avoid. Mm -hmm. If yep. they send you some models or a scan and they send you a cephalometric x-ray and you see things on the cephalometric x-ray that shows you this is not a good beginner case. This is a case that should be referred to the orthodontist. I know you'll keep them out of trouble. Not, you're right. And not unusual for us to do that, that exact thing, to say this looks like a good case to send to an orthodontist. Yeah. So. Right. Um, okay, great, Brock. Thanks so much for your time. And I wanted to let everybody know that, um, uh, well, I really enjoyed it myself and um, keeping an eye on the, the attendees that were taking part in the meeting tonight. I think it's not unusual to have people dropping off the map a little bit as the night goes on. Our, our numbers were actually climbing a little bit as you were speaking. So I don't know if people were calling their friends or what, but uh, we had more people at the end of the, the night than what we started with. And it was really well attended. So I want to thank everybody once again for turning out tonight. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed tonight, please uh, tune in again on March 23rd, another one hour presentation. And um, if you think the webinars are good, you should see this guy live because uh, that's where the real action happens. So do consider coming to the in-person courses uh, as well. Thank you, Jeff. You did a great job. Thanks, everybody. And good night. <clears throat>